Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel International A-Level Biology, Unit 3 for January 2022. Let us begin with the first question. Question 1 says, the photograph shows an arancho plant that grows in East Africa. Boiled leaves of arancho are used as a traditional medicine. Extracts of this plant show antimicrobial properties. So this is the plant they are referring to. And down here they say, in an investigation, roots of that plant were dried and powdered. Extracts were made using two solvents. There is methanol and acetone. The powdered root was shaken with each solvent and then filtered to produce these extracts. These extracts were used to measure the antimicrobial properties of four different types of bacteria, and the antimicrobial properties of the antibiotic gentamicin were also measured. The graph shows the data from this investigation. According to this experiment, two solvents were used to extract the antimicrobials from the plant. Then the antimicrobial properties of the extracts were compared with a non-antibiotic gentamicin. And then these are the results. On the vertical axis, we have antimicrobial effect, and on the horizontal axis, we have the type of bacteria. So for all extracts, we see the least effectiveness with P. aeruginosa, and this one here has the greatest effectiveness. We can also see that for all extracts, Methanol being used as a solvent was better than using acetone because we see extracts that were carried out using methanol had greater antimicrobial effect than those that were carried out using acetone. So they say state of suitable dependent variable with units for this investigation. Here my dependent variable is the diameter of the zone of inhibition. However, you could also choose area or degree of stability, absorbance if you're carrying out in solution. And then the units should be millimeters due to diameter, but if it's area, you say millimeter squared. Next they say, describe a safe method that uses your dependent variable to obtain the results shown in this graph. So since my dependent variable is the diameter of the zone of inhibition, I began by saying use aseptic techniques, an open flame and previously sterilized equipment, then inoculate a petri dish with bacteria, place filter paper previously stocked in the antimicrobial extracts onto the inoculated petri dish, the filter paper should be of the same size and they should be previously soaked in the same volume of the antimicrobial extract. Then we incubate the petri dish at the same temperature, that could be about 28 degrees, at least this has to be below the body temperature. We could incubate for 1 to 7 days, you could choose for 3 days, then measure the diameter of the zone of inhibition, and lastly repeat the experiment at similar conditions to calculate the mean. Moving on, here they say, Calculate the percentage difference in the effects of the methanol extract and gentamicin on S. typhimurium. So we have to go and look at what gentamicin did as well as methanol. Let me go back here. So for this bacteria, we can see the antimicrobial effect with gentamicin was about 14, and that with methanol extract was about 29. So moving back here, I showed you 14 and 29. The difference is 29 minus 14 which is 15, and therefore the percentage difference should be 15, divided by 29 times 100, which gave me 52%. Down here they say comment on the antimicrobial effect of extracts of the arancho plant. And again, this is commenting on the results as we saw in the graph here. We can see this one here, the extracts with methanol had the greatest antimicrobial effect. Those with gentamicin had the lowest antimicrobial effect. They had the greatest antimicrobial effect on this bacteria here, and the least antimicrobial effect on this one here. So moving back here, I said, all extracts have some degree of effectiveness with all bacteria, and extracts with methanol had the greatest effect on all bacteria. Both extracts were more effective than gentamicin. I'm talking about the extract with acetone as well as methanol. Then the antimicrobials had the greatest effect on S. oros, and the least effect on P. aeruginosa. Moving on. In part B, they say, in a further study, the chemicals beta cytosterol and stigma sterol were purified from the methanol extract, meaning these were got from the methanol extracts. The antimicrobial properties of these chemicals were measured using a different method, and the graph shows the results of this study. We still see this is the effectiveness with methanol extracts, and we see the other two have their own effectiveness. However, because we see the sum of that and that does not equal to that, 
it means the methanol extract still contained some other antimicrobial that was not extracted. Because if you sum up that, it doesn't equal to that. Summing up that doesn't equal to that. Summing up this doesn't equal to that. And summing up this doesn't equal to that. It means there are some unextracted antimicrobials within the methanol extracts. So here they say discuss the effect of these two chemicals compared with the methanol extract. I said all three compounds showed antimicrobial effect. Methanol extracts were the most effective with all types of bacteria compared to the two chemicals. Of course, you can see they have greater antimicrobial effect. And then in all cases, the effect with methanol extracts was greater than the sum of the effect of the other two chemicals. And this shows that there are more antimicrobial compounds in the methanol extracts than the two chemicals that were purified. Moving on. Here they say plant extracts can be used to make new drugs for treatment of infections. In trials to test these drugs, placebos and double-blind trials are used. Explain the purpose of each of these. Placebos are always used as controls in order to eliminate physiological effects of taking a drug. The physiological effects could be somebody thinks they took a drug and then their body reacts in a specific way even if they did not take the drug. For double-blind trials, these are carried out where the scientist and the doctor do not know if the treatment that is given to the patient is the new drug or not. This is carried out in order to remove bias so that doctors do not give preference or the scientists do not give preference to people who took the real drug than those who did not take it. So it removes bias. So this brings us to the end of question one. Let's continue to question two. Question two, fibers from the stems of hemp plants are widely used in industry for their great tensile strength. The relationship between tensile strength and fiber diameter was investigated. The photograph shows a cross-section of part of a hemp fiber and an eyepiece graticule. The fiber bundle is made up of pith cells, some of which are shown here. So down here they say, we see this is the structure they're talking about, and this is A. So they say each of the smallest units of the graticule is 3 times 10 power negative 6 meters. Calculate the width of the pith labeled A in micrometers. Now when I counted, they were about 19 from this point here to that point, if you can see those crosses in blue, they are about 19 units. And if each is 3 times 10 power negative 6, it means the total of that is going to be 19 times 3.0 times 10 power negative 6. And we know 1 meter is 10 power 6 micrometer, therefore this is going to be 57 micrometer. Here they say, name two types of tissue found in fibers from plant stems. We have the sclerenchyma as well as the xylem. Moving on. Here they say, the diagram shows the products that was used in an investigation to find the tensile strength of hemp fibers. Here we have the two stems, we have the fiber in question, and we have the masses added to the fibers. So they say, describe how you would use this apparatus to make a valid comparison of the tensile strength of fibers with different diameters. If fibers have different diameters, it means that is the only variation. Therefore, we have to keep every other variable constant. It means they have to have the same mass. They have to have the same age, same hydration from the same type of plant, and everything else has to be maintained constant. So I said, the length, the mass, the age, and the hydration levels of the fiber should be the same. During the experiment, variables like humidity meaning humidity of the area where the experiment is carried out, the temperature should be controlled, and the fibers should be placed ensuring that the distance between the stand is the same during all experiments. I'm talking about the stands being positioned at the same position or at the same point, or they should be the same distance from each other with all fibers that are experimented on. Then the mass should be added gently and one at a time until a specific fiber breaks. Add these masses slowly and gently in order not to trigger the breaking of the fibers. Moving on. Here they say some results from this investigation are shown in the table. Here we have the diameter in micrometers and the tensile strength. We can see as the diameter increases, the tensile strength is decreasing, although the decrease doesn't seem to be linear. So here they say plot a suitable graph of these results and join the points with a straight line. I drew this graph occupying more than half of the given graph papers, so I'm okay with that with the scale I chose. It would be very hard to choose a scale that is more different from this. It will consume a lot of time, so provided you've covered more than half of the given space, you will be all right. So on the vertical axis, I place tensile strength. 
with the units here and then on the horizontal axis the diameter with the units in micrometer and then just plot exactly as it was given and connect the points you will get the marks that were awarded moving on here they say describe the relationship between the diameter and the tensile strength of these fibers so if we see here like i've already said as the diameter increases the tensile strength of the fibers decreases although the decrease is not linear the greatest decrease happens between this point here and the least decrease happens between this point here so here i said as diameter increases tensile strength decreases there is a negative correlation and the relationship is not linear the greatest decrease in tensile strength is observed in diameter between 21 to 25 micrometer and the least decrease is observed in diameter between 81 to 84 micrometer so this brings us to the end of question two let's continue to question three question three a student investigated the water potential of carrots six cylinders were cut from a single carrot one cylinder was placed in distilled water and the others were placed in solutions of different concentrations of sucrose the length of each cylinder was measured using a ruler every five minutes for the next 50 minutes suggest how the method can be modified to increase validity to increase validity we have to ensure that the cylinders are of the same length and they are of the same diameter down here they say suggest how the method could be modified to reduce measurement errors we could repeat the experiments at each diameter at similar conditions and then calculate the mean we could also use calipers to measure the length in order to give accurate results here they say explain how 0.4 mole per decimeter cube solution could be made from 1 mole per decimeter cube sucrose solution. I began this with a calculation. If we are using the stock solution of 1 mole per decimeter cube to produce 0.4 mole per decimeter cubed, the transferred number of moles from the stock solution are going to be exactly the same number of moles in the new solution. So that means number of moles from this are equal to the number of moles from this one here, the stock solution, are equal to the number of moles in this. Since number of moles is concentration times volume, concentration 1 times volume 1 should equal to concentration 2 times volume 2. And making volume to the subject should be concentration 1 times volume 1 divided by concentration 2. If I assume that 10 centimeters cubed are removed from the stock solution, the total volume of the new solution after dilution should be the concentration 1, which is that, times the volume 1, which is 10, divided by the concentration 2, which is 0 0.4, and therefore, my new solution is going to be 25 centimeters cubed. That means I could have added 15 centimeters cubed to the 10 centimeters cubed of the stock solution. Therefore, the ratio of the stock to the added water should be 10 to 15, and the ratio becomes 2 to 3. So here I say it makes the stock solution with water in a ratio of stock to water, which is equal to 2 to 3. Moving on, here they say, suggest two properties of sucrose that make it suitable for use in this investigation. Sucrose will completely dissolve in water, and because sucrose is a disaccharide, it will be metabolically inactive, and it will not cross the cell membranes to be metabolized. Here they say, the graph shows the results of this investigation. On the vertical axis, we see change in length, and on the horizontal axis, we see time. So for some concentrations, we see as the time increases, we see there is a decrease. The change in length is going down, while for others, we see there is an increase. So here they say draw a table to show the result at 50 minutes for all six concentrations. All you need to do is come at 50 and find the corresponding length. For here I have negative 5.2, that is negative 4.6. This part here is negative 3.4, that is negative 1.4, that is positive 1.6, and that is positive 4.0. So I needed to draw a table of concentration of sucrose solution with units in mole per decimeter cubed. In the other side, change in length at 50 minutes in millimeters. So we know the concentrations are coming from here. We have 0 0.0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0, which I pointed here. And then their corresponding change in length, which is 4, 1.6, negative 1.4, negative 3.4, negative 4.6, and negative 5.2. And that's it. You'd get three marks for that. Moving on. Here they say... Calculate the rate of change in length of the carrot cylinder in a 1 mole per decimeter solution at 15 minutes. You come at 15 minutes and draw a tangent to the curve at that point. 
and then find the gradient of the tangent. So from my drawing, I saw this point here was 20, negative 4.8, and that was 10, negative 3.6. So I had to do change in y, meaning negative 4.8 minus negative 3.6 divided by 20 minus 10, and that gave me my gradient, which you see here. Negative 4.8 minus negative 3.6 divided by 20 minus 10. In the end, I got negative 0 0.12 millimeters per minute as my gradient. Here they say, explain the results between 40 to 50 minutes for the one mole per decimeter cubed solution. Between 40 to 50, the concentration is almost constant and that tells you there is zero net water movement and therefore the osmotic potential inside and out are exactly the same. So here I said, the length of the cylinder stops decreasing because the water potential inside the cylinder is the same as the water potential outside. So down here they say, Explain the results between 40 to 50 minutes for the 0, 0.0 mole per decimeter cubed. If you look here as well, this stops increasing. So I said the cylinder stops increasing in length because the cell is fully turgid or the water potential inside the cell and that outside the cell are equal. So this brings us to the end of question 3 as well as to the end of this paper. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.